I gonna make a boo boo. <laughs> Do not, under any circumstances, do not cut that part off there thinking it's a bit of flashy sprue thing because I've just done that and now I've ruined the piston. Balls! Because that is actually supposed to attach into this thing here. Shit! Oops! Ah well. We'll have to pretend with that part. I don't bloody know. The whole point of doing this build, the way I've been doing it, is so I can use these things and I go and it up straight away. Oh! I don't know. And avoid the temptation too of. I don't know if you make out that little sticky out thing on the corner. Don't knock that off either. Because it looks like that's going to be part of a stop joint thing. Can't believe I just did that. Stupid bloke. Stupid, 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 stupid. How dare they? How dare they indeed? Real life interrupting. Not sure, people, what we're doing, Tony. Oh, nerks. Right, put that back down. Put it down. Put it down. Put it down. Right. Breathe. Relax, breathe. Working on the upper arm. Oh, I've lost my stride now and everything. People interrupting me. Bloody, bloody people, people, bloody people, people. Bloody, will you stay there? Stay, stay. I like that. I like that. See the little groove there? It fits into a groove in the arm itself to hold it all in place. I like that. And then you get the part that I've buggered up because I'm a nerk. Absolute dipstick. Fool. Oh, that's going to be fiddly. That's why they put you there. Get the lower arm into the hinge. This is a hinge. Wow, you need about 17 pairs of hands for this. Where do you go? <sighs> it helps if you use the right part first. Right, so use the right part, that helps. And that goes there. That makes more sense. And then that one stops in that hole. You still need about 17 pairs of hands though. Right. Don't breathe. Really quick. I'll show you properly this on the. Oh, Jesus. Try to properly on the other arm. The one that's got the elbow attached. The, this part. Rotate your cuff. And top arm. I'll have to pretend that works. 
and I see there now you can see the arm moves itself properly. <sighs> Breathe. Right then. So we've got this weird shouldery thing. And we got a little grommety type plug that goes on the end of that spike there. Like so. And then we get that thing goes over the top. Little ball and socket type thing, and it's got a little shouty warning on the instructions about that nub sticking up there. Which apparently should stay to the top, and you get the pins that line up like so. And apparently, holding that towards you. Being careful not to snap these things. Nice firm click. We're taking shape already. We do it that. Now we get this hand. And we attach the server knuckly type things over the top. Shift you. And the only thing is, I'm definitely transferring aluminium. You can probably see the shine there. Transferring from somewhere. This thing has dried overnight. And it's about 22 hours after actually painting this. And I'm still transferring silver. No, oh, aluminium. It's quite worrying. Okay, so we'll put the hams in there. Hams? The hams? And then... Oh! Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Look at articulation. Lovely. Yeah, definitely transferring. Just put make it out there. Hmm. This is where I made that terrible boo boo. Because we actually need that to go in there, like so. And now we don't need 17 pairs of hands like I did earlier. Silly Tony. Fasten that up. Make sure that moves. Yep. Got that. Let's give it a squash. And then the rotating cuff goes in there. Let's see if we can make sure the pins line up. You've got clearances everywhere. And that's how it's supposed to move. 
like that. Now it's a little bit bendy there because something's binding. That's probably paint. Yeah, I've got a paint bind. Pretty marvellous. So very very gently. Let's reopen that. Gently. Yeah, there you are. I can feel you binding just there. You can actually see it where it's stuck on this side. So very gently take the lot back apart. Job things flying off. Okay. And I'm just going to scrape that back a little bit. So it looks off that one. And then A bit better, it's not much, but it should be okay. And if we really, really, really need to, get a really thin um, drill bit in there, which I do have, but not to hand. So it's still a bit bindy, but it's not as bad. I say it still is. Right, so off camera. Okay, so well, let me introduce you to my drills, which I kept in this little thing here. Well, for the life of me, I can't remember where I got that from. Right, having there all sorts of tiny little done things to me, made that thing, and. Two best friends. This one, Mr. Fox, and um, you'll probably find that more useful than the one you were using because you can actually hold that bit and yeah, either that or good old Archimedes. Archimedes drill. Um, I've only just realised that I have these. Sorry, love. Um, I let you down on that one. I don't know. From Bradley Fox, that's the Games Workshop one. And it's a lot easier to use. Like you can put it on your piece and just twiddle. And it's a lot easier. Mm hmm Yep, I know. I know. I should have told you earlier. So basically I'm just gonna painstakingly go through all my little robots and find out which one goes through just to make that hole a little bit wider ooh you were really close but not quite let's try you get off and you've got these ridiculously tiny ones as well ooh you're close ooh you are close Hmm. Yep, you'll do. So I'm just going to have a quick nibble. Nothing major. There we go, that's better.
coming in. Ooh, careful. It's not too eager, Tony. Getting too eager again. Stop it. There we go. Miles better. Lovely. Leaving the palm off for the time being. And it's like I ain't connecting him up, but I can still very gently, again, being careful with these things. You don't put too much pressure on. So, that's that. Let's do some spraying, shall we? This should be interesting. I've never actually sprayed the gold leaf before. I've only ever used it as a highlight painty type thing. So, quick and nasty 50-50 mix. And before I actually start applying this properly to 3PO himself, I'm going to use that spare breath plate. Get my angle right. A quick test on the bottom. I used to really like mist coat first. That was horrible on that screen behind me. No, uh, behind you, even. Back there. Well. Doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. Just do a quick air dry. And then a second coat. And then another air dry. That's not too bad. We can work with that. I like that. So that's one coat there. That's two coats. Let's try a third. I'm going to try and just limit this to the underside. Let's see if we can get the distinction. Just air dry it. So I think it's going to be the three coats going off that. We'll see what it looks like after two. Thank you to start with. That looks a lot more realistic than that bloody oval plating they gave you. Stop ranting, stop ranting, give them a minute, stop ranting. Yeah, I do prefer that. Miles better. <laughs> no fucking chair.
<laughs> um, yeah, uh, we're back to modern day, present time, and all that kind of stuff. Um, just going through my clips then, as I'm editing, and I realised that I'd forgotten to show this next part with the varnish. <clears throat> um, so we've missed out a fair amount, unfortunately. Uh, I thought I'd recorded it, and it's not in my pending files things. So, um, basically what happened next was I ended up having to work a couple of night shifts. So this, the gold, that's my gold leaf, wherever it's gone now, because I've put it away, because it's, it's like a month since I filmed this. Um, yeah, I let that drive for, it was about three days altogether. And it was then given a coat of this clear stuff. Or was it two coats? I can't remember. I think it was two coats actually, uh, so I could get him nice and shiny for the weathering stage. Now, that is the old bottle. That's about eight years old. Um, as you can see, I've barely used it. You know, I'm just about halfway down now. Um, it's probably not even that. That's the old stuff. It's been rebranded about three or four times since. So, if you are looking for this stuff, the formula has been improved. It looks slightly yellow in that bottle. But trust me, it dries crystal clear. It really does. As you've seen on the R2 build, I think I've used them, um, used that stuff a couple of times on R2. Wherever R2's gone. Where's R2? There he is. Alright, shush. N not your range. Shut up. You shut up. Um, it doesn't dry yellow at all. Uh, the more recent stuff has a cloudy finish. It's Basically, so you can tell where you're putting it, because um, that's the only trouble with that stuff. Unless you catch it in the light properly, you can't tell you're, you're using it. Um, so that's why the new stuff's cloudy. Goes on cloudy, dries clear. Hence the name. Uh, I think it's branded as Pledge with Future Shine or something silly like that at the moment. Uh, I could be wrong. It should look like this. Hopefully, if I've found a photo. If not, I'm just sat there waving my hands for no reason. So, to summarise, a couple of days of drying time. I think it's about three days altogether for the gold to dry, and then a couple of coats of that clear stuff there, and then we go into the next bit you're about to see. Okay, is that clear? Clear? Yeah, clear. Yeah. I'll get my coat. Remembered. I've remembered. I'm going to show you. Um, I wasn't quite dry with the gloss on this arm. As you can see there, it's actually pulled back the the gold layer. God, I can't find my words today to reveal the the aluminium underneath. You now, for some strange reason, it's reacted with the gold. So whether the gold was completely dry or not before I put the gloss on, I'm not too sure, but that's left arm, so I'm not too bothered, we're not going to see that anyway, but on the right arm, as you remember, I cut that stupid thing off, like a nerk, I've actually managed to prise the arm open a little bit, and stick the detail where that ball and hinge should be, so instead of looking like that, It looks like that, and it still works. So I'm a bit happier. And to be honest, that looks a little bit more natural than that does. But I've not checked my reference photos properly yet to see if that is the case. But it works. And I don't care anymore. Because it's Sunday, and I'm in work on Monday. And it's bank holiday Monday, and I'm working. And I don't like that. I really don't like that. That's grease. It's it filth. Working on bank holiday Monday. Yay. Still, I'm in a warehouse all on my own. It could be worse. I could still be working for uh, high street retail. Like I used to. I'm going to deal with all them peasants. Sorry, customers. Um, especially at four o'clock. When you're closing at four o'clock, you always get some nerk turned up on the door saying, let me in. Nope. Closing time's four. Yeah, but you still got people in the shop. Well, yeah, they were here before four o'clock. I still have to serve these people. 
You have turned up after four, therefore my doors are locked. See you later. You've got to leave work yet. Yeah. Get a grip. Get out the bloody pub. You've had all f***ing day. Now you turn up. Charlie's. Right, enough waffling. I'm going to fast forward through this bit. Otherwise I'll start ranting and raving about something. stupid like theory driving test. Don't get me started on that one. Nope. Time lapse. show you through this uh, through this lag because the detail that comes out is absolutely gorgeous especially here where these stripes are I'll show you in a second when they, they come out I'm just going around that kit then with that gunk wash there's all kinds of detail I can actually see now that just completely passed me by earlier in the build like on the, the back of the battery pack that I'm still in two minds whether to actually put on or not I'll show you that as soon as I sort this out detail is gorgeous so I'll put that there Start rubbing this off. And it actually looks like tarnished um, tarnished brass as you do this. It's gorgeous.
bloody lovely. And that big screw head there is just oh a beautiful touch it really is. Whoop. There we go. Absolutely stunning detail. And the shadow in there it leaves in them corners. Just up here. Down there in that groove. It's perfect. It really is. I love that. Right, where's that battery pack? It's just there. All that little detail. All these little chevrolet things. I hadn't even seen that until I did the wash. Perfect. And then the batteries themselves. Again, at some point, uh, I'll be doing a little bit of detail painting on there and bringing out a little bit of silver and stuff like that just to give it a bit of interest. But that is going to wash done. I've got to do now is wait another week. Yeah. Oops. It's fallen over again. So, back to the present day. Uh, we're going to leave this episode here now. Um, just to give you a quick update thing. Oi, there we go. Uh, the pilot you just saw with all the gunk washy type stuff. Once all that's dried for about a week, I then gave it a couple of coats of this stuff which I again thought and filmed I think I know what I've done wrong um, it was filmed at the same time as doing the R2 build and I think I've left the camera rolling I've got a hazy memory of doing this I left the camera rolling whilst I used that for R2 I came back to do 3PO I've left the camera rolling but the parts that have clipped so I could do the R2 video I've binned Instead of keeping it for this fella. Yeah. But. Uh, I'll go over it again in part 4. At the beginning of part 4. I think it will be. Yeah. Will be. Yes. Um, I'm editing part 3 now as I do this. Uh, once the gunk wash is dried. Leave it for about 5 days. Maybe a week. It helps if you do a couple of night shifts like I did at the time. A um, couple of coats of future. Or a gloss varnish. Whichever you prefer. It really, really, really doesn't matter. Um, I did have a problem with the humbrel. I do have a hazy memory of that because it's over a month ago since I did this. Um, we did a little crazy thing on the back. There we um, I'm not too sure if I can pick this up. I do mention it in one of the videos, I think. Just there. The gold hadn't quite dried properly. So when I went over it the first time with the humbrel, uh, it kind of crazed and stuck to my glove and I went up oh, like that and pulled the gold away so do be careful with that leave um, your metallics to dry for at least two days if you can now, don't rush through it like I did um, because you will get all kinds of bleed throughs I've just spotted another one just there and this is a month after the fats where the gold rubbed off and left the silver underneath <sighs> so yeah just be patient with it, don't rush through like I have. Um, still not using my website yet, because I've still got all the funeral stuff from the family thing to take care of at the moment. Um, but I will get back onto that as soon as I can get free of the responsibilities of what I'm going through at the moment. Uh, plus the work, plus the night shifts, and other bits and bobs, like going back and forth between here and my girlfriends. Um, so thank you yet again for stopping by um we're up up now for part three and we will see you in part four what a desolate place this is it's not desolate this is my bedroom for goodness sake really yeah i'll bring you in you're supposed to be thanking the maker remember you ungrateful <laughs>